there are, there are a few things uh, in radiology, we call them ant minis. The idea is if you go to an airport to look for somebody and I give you a really good description, there are thousands of people at the airport. So it might still be really hard to find the person. If I say, oh, they're five foot six and they have brown hair and they wear their glasses, you might get to the airport and say, wow, there are 10,000 people here and that narrowed it down to 100. I still don't know what I'm looking for. But if I have an ant mini who meets all those characteristics and you've already met her once, you could go to the airport and you've already met her and so you see her and you're gonna recognize her. And so that's why we call that an ant mini in radiology. Um, and there are a few in addition to the, kind of the things that we just talked about. Um, an example that comes to mind quickly is uh, what we call a pseudo aneurysm. So if you have a defect, but not a complete defect in a blood vessel wall, usually in an artery, um, when we turn on the color flow, it creates a yin yang sign basically, where blood is flowing in and back out of that. And so then instead of having blood flow going in one direction, which is represented by red or blue on our color display. You're gonna have blood come in and come right back out and so you'll have a swirling effect. And as it swirls, it's going in the opposite direction that it was as it came in and so that creates a, a yin-yang appearance on our ultrasound color flow images. Uh, and that's in essence an ant mini or pathognomonic for a pseudo aneurysm coming off of an artery. Doppler flow is a, another very important part of ultrasound. It's part of the whole idea of real time, that CAT scan gives us great images, but we can't necessarily do it real time, and so we can't get an idea of if something is changing. Um, and Doppler flow, a couple of the areas that we use it uh, very commonly for are for uh, the testicles and for the ovaries. Ovarian and testicular torsion are things that can be treated, but if untreated can lead to death of an ovary or testicle, which not only can have kind of the, the psychological ramification of maybe affecting someone's ability to reproduce, but have the very important medical ramifications of having a part of that person's body twist and die, basically. And so if someone has symptoms that are concerning for torsion, uh, we can put the ultrasound transducer on, evaluate the testicles or the ovary, get an idea in real time of what the size and, and grayscale sonographic characteristics are. And then we can turn on the Doppler flow, find a blood vessel, and see if there is a normal waveform for arterial flow and for venous flow. And there are characteristic changes, the main one being loss of a normal waveform when there is torsion present. So that's something that we feel that we can be very helpful in that a CT scan can't necessarily tell you. Because if, it, if the ovary, for example, is torsed very recently on a CAT scan, the ovaries may look the same density and may be the same size. It's not going to be until later as the ovary starts to have more symptoms, uh, more manifestations of the decreased oxygen, that it will become edematous and swell. And so if we catch it early, while the ovaries may look the same, if there's no blood flow to one, then we can diagnose using Doppler flow almost immediately that there is torsion present.